Hey everyone, it's Alex with Lover Fighter Writer, and welcome to how to write 1200 words in eight minutes with Phrase AI templates. So uh, this is a bit of a different video for me because I recorded it with no sound and now I'm doing a voiceover. And as you can see, I just started with a keyword, the keyword being Facebook ads targeting strategies. And uh, I'm just starting with the keyword and some custom uh, phrase templates that I made. And the first template that I used there turned the keyword into a title. It's a headline generator. And now I'm putting the headline generator into a uh, template that will generate a blog hook and intro for me. So this is uh, one of the mo more effective templates in the, uh, in the workflow. It produces really good content for me pretty consistently. So you can see I've just pasted that into the document. And now I'm moving on to the next step in my workflow, which is uh, the article section generator. And, or sorry, this is the article subheading generator. So again, I put in the title and it's gonna give me a list of subheadings. And you can see it's being kind of uh, repetitive here. And it's still being repetitive. And what I noticed when I was doing this is that it was kind of paying too much attention to the uh, to the year it was really focusing on the year so I decided just to um, remove the year from the end right here and to generate again and as soon as I did that it started giving me much better uh, subheading ideas so uh, this one actually I think I got all the subheadings that I used right here just from one run of that and all I had to do to make it better was to remove the the year the for 2022 part from the end um, so it's worth uh, tweaking the inputs to your templates when you're when you're working on them and testing them and when you're using them live too, uh, because you never know exactly what might be uh, influencing the output. So here I've just uh, I just remembered that I don't need to make a title for my conclusion because my conclusion generator actually generates uh, the subheading for the conclusion uh, as part of it. And now I'm just setting myself up to use the next step in the process, which is my uh, my blog section generator. So you can see I'm going to go to step three. It's actually step three B, and because uh, it's the second iteration of this template that I made, and so I pasted in my blog title, my blog hook, my blog intro, and the H2 that I want it to write, and it's going to write a section for me based on that H2, and uh, this template. Uh, it fails to do what I want once in a while, but it does work most of the time very well. And it actually wrote a really nice section for me right here. Um, uh, if you, if, you know, if you want to pause the video or something and read that section, it's actually pretty good. Um, the rest of them are a little bit lower quality because obviously this is a pretty specific topic that would require really niche knowledge and uh, real experience and the AI doesn't have that, it just has kind of historical knowledge that it's gathered from reading information. Um, but even so, this is like a really good uh, starting point for this article. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier to finish writing the entire article, which uh, I'm looking forward to doing. And this is a, a workflow I've been using for a while now. It works, it works quite well. Um, if you're wondering why I'm, why it puts in the uh, it, so it's, you, you might have noticed that the template is generating the, the heading for me uh, a second time. And the reason I did that is because I noticed that when it does that, it's much more likely to, um, to have a, a high quality output than uh, when, it, when it doesn't do that, it tends to not have a, as high quality an output. So I, I left that in as just a quick uh, kind of at a glance way for me to tell if it's a high quality output or not. And although I think there's one in here, I don't remember which section it is, but there's one section that I think I have to rewrite um, once, I had to like regenerate text for it. And other than that, uh, they, all, they all work the first time, which is pretty good for, uh, for a bit of a longer form template like the one that I'm using here. You know, it's generating 200 to 300 words at a time and uh, I find, at least with, with custom templates like this, the more, uh, the more information that it contains and the more information it has to read and try to mimic, um, the more 
the more room for error there is. So uh, short form templates tend to kind of work a little bit better and be easier to make, but obviously longer form templates like these are very, very powerful, especially if you need to write blog content. And so now I'm just working on the second to last H2 there, how to use Facebook insights for better targeting. Um, and again, uh, you know, this is pretty, pretty good quality stuff. It's not the same that you would get from like a real, really experienced Facebook advertiser. In fact, I think this is the one, yeah, I just deleted that. So that was the, the run that I didn't like. So uh, I, think it, I think it might've repeated some of the content from the template, which it does once in a while. So you just have to be on the lookout for that. And uh, so now I'm rerunning it and it's gonna give me a, a good quality section right here. So I'm just gonna paste that right in and move on to the next one again. And here we go, just copying the subheading and replacing it in the framework. So uh, the reason that I, I made the framework with a single large input instead of multiple inputs is just so that it's easier to change the heading out. Um, because if, maybe it would work the other way. That, it, that just seemed like the easiest way to make it and it's been working really well. Um, I might consider testing it the other way again, but I did test it both ways and it just, it seemed to be easier to use with only one large input and then I just edit part of it. Uh, as opposed to having two separate inputs and editing one of them. Um, so here we have it. Uh, it's gonna talk about how to use Facebook pixel tracking right here. And I think I, I think I used two different sections together in that last one. And at some point I used the um, the write for me tool as well, uh, but very sparingly. I think I just use it like once. And now I'm on to the conclusion. So I'm gonna grab, or I'm gonna erase the conclusion part. I'm gonna copy the title right here and go back and then find my uh, last template. I had a filter in there, so I have to get rid of it. And then I'm gonna to go to step X, which is my conclusion and run that template with the title. And this one is actually the hardest to make. Uh, I found it really challenging to get, uh, to get the AI to write a conclusion that read like a conclusion, um, but, and it still only works inconsistently, but it worked on the first try in this time. So that looks cool. And uh, it wrote a pr pretty nice little conclusion with a CTA, which again, it only does sometimes. It's supposed to write a CTA every time. But anyways, now I'm just showing off the 1200 words and that's it.